on behalf of my colleague, the Lord Bishop of Gloucester, who is unable to be in her place, she declares an interest as Bishop for Her Majesty's prisons in England and Wales, and these are her words. I'm delighted to add my name in support of Amendment 213, tabled by the Noble Lord, Lord Dubbs. I also have great sympathy for the Amendment 212, tabled by the noble Lord, Lord Ponsonby. Both are aiming to remedy something of the justice system's current overemphasis on prison sentences without sufficient regard for whether prison is an effective remedy for the offender or a guarantee to the safety and benefit of the community. Short sentences, by and large, have proven to be ineffective on both counts. Sentences of six months or less are easily long enough to be disruptive, but not nearly long enough to be effective in any rehabilitative programme. Short sentences are bad news for families, as we discussed previously in this committee stage, in terms of the impact of imprisonment on primary carers and their families. Short sentences damage employment prospects and mental health and more. They are therefore disproportionately punitive, not least when the majority are for non-violent offences, and they're also ineffective. Close to half of all those leaving custody go on to re-offend within a year of their release. That increases to almost two-thirds of those sentences to less than 12 months in custody. The social and economic cost of this level of re-offending has been estimated at 18 billion per annum by the Ministry of Justice's own analysis. While the cost to the communities and victims who suffer the effects of crime are impossible to estimate. We do know that community sentences are far more effective at reducing reoffending than short prison sentences and cost far less than a prison place. How have we reached a place in the UK in which imprisonment is so overused and seen as a solution to all criminal justice problems when the evidence and data simply does not support this. The UK has some of the highest imprisonment rates in Western Europe. England and Wales have a prison population rate of 133 per 100,000 inhabitants. That is 27 per 100,000, above the median average for EU member states. We fare even worse against the bigger European states. For example, Germany has an imprisonment rate of just 69 per 100,000. That's roughly half our rate. Perhaps not coincidentally, Germany has operated a presumption against short sentences since 1969. Overall, our prison population has increased by over 80% in 30 years, which would seem to suggest a trend across a series of governments of trying the same thing in the hope of achieving different results. It has been estimated by the Prison Reform Trust that two-thirds of prisoners are in prison for a non-violent offence. These offences are often theft or drug-related, linked to poverty, addiction and trauma, as we've heard. Yet we seem to think it better to lock someone up rather than focus time and money on addressing the root causes. For women, that rate is higher still, an astonishing 80%. Almost half are on short sentences, six months or less, overall including the majority of all custodial sentences given to women. As I mentioned earlier in this committee, I was fortunate enough to host an event here in Parliament and I was delighted to welcome the Minister, Lord Wolfson. I hope he won't mind if I remind him of some of the testimony we heard together. Nikki Gould of the Nelson Trust, of which I declare an interest as the president, told us that we fundamentally know that prison exacerbates women's issues and leads to intergenerational cycles of trauma, abuse and reoffending. We heard that diverting 500 women through programmes like the Nelson Trust is not only more effective at turning their lives around, but also comes at the equivalent cost of sending just five women to prison. And we heard that with some incredulity from experts that 500 new prison places for more women serving more short sentences could be a better solution 
than long-term investment in women's centres. My Lords, this is one of those happy occasions when the moral case happens to align with making excellent economic sense. An effective justice system that is relational, responsible and restorative would cost less in the long term. Finding a way to move beyond short sentences would better support families and children made vulnerable by family breakdown. If implemented as part of a broader package of support for problem-solving courts, women's centres and good and effective community sentences, it would lead to better results in terms of reoffending and rehabilitation and therefore safer communities. And it would come at a fraction of the price of maintaining the current revolving door of short sentences. In 2019, it seemed, as we've heard, like we might have been approaching a breakthrough when the Lord Chancellor then went on record in favour of a presumption against short sentences. If ministers are not accepting these amendments, then I hope that we will hear what they see as the future of short sentences and how they can be reduced. <laughs>